Good day, everyone. Before we get into today's exciting session of 100NL, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you get these Lee Betts online poker vlogs as they do come out. Now, into the session. So these are the results from the session that we played. I did end up getting in 1,532 hands, which pretty stoked with always trying to get over that 1,500 hand mark. And in terms of results, run pretty well across the session, did win 223. So can't complain with that. In terms of how I actually played, well, we're going to go further into detail. I have some very interesting hand histories, which we're going to run over, which will hopefully tell the tale of how I did play throughout this session. So without any further ado, Let's get into the hands. First hand up, we get a min click open from a loose passive hijack. And then the actions on me in the cutoff with ace king, sexy hand to wake up with straight away. I go ahead and three bet it to seven. Then the pre-flop raiser calls the three bet and we're heads up to a flop of seven, four, three with two hearts. When the villain checks it over to us, I definitely want to go ahead and bet with this combination of ace king specifically. Having the ace of hearts, we're going to have a lot of equity on this board. We have the backdoor nut flush draw. And also, even against stronger hands in my opponent's range, like those pocket eights, pocket nines, pocket tens, maybe pocket jacks, we can hit an overcard on them. We can also bluff them off on a lot of runouts if there's a heart or you know a card that's basically 10 or higher. We're going to get a lot of folds on those turns. So I just want to start putting in the pressure straight away, representing those overpairs that we have, the strongest overpairs that we have in our range that our opponent does is, basically queens and higher. I go ahead and bet nine. Then things get interesting because the hijack actually decides to check raise it to 18. So a literal min click when my opponent goes ahead and check raises this small, despite them having a bunch of sets on this board and they could be even doing uh, this with one of those overpairs that I mentioned earlier. I think we have to call here with the back not enough flush draw. Like I said, we have so much equity on this board. I'm not going anywhere getting such a good price, particularly when I have position during the hand. So we go heads up to a turn, which is the five of spades. And then the villain goes ahead and checks it over to me, which is pretty interesting because I think if they did have pocket eights or pocket nines here, they probably would keep betting. Even though there is a four liner to a six out there, they're probably not going to be concerned that I have many sixes in my range as the three better. So the action's on me here and I'm not really sure what the best play is. Is my opponent really going to fold pocket eights to a bunch of barrels? Maybe, maybe not. I decide to put in pressure though. I go ahead and bet 33. And this is just going forward with my plan to bluff on if the river card is a 10 or higher or a heart, just because I can represent the nut flush if it's a heart or the strongest over pairs. I don't really expect to get too many folds on this turn. Like even if my opponent did check raise with Queen Jack Hearts, it's probably going to call at least one time to try and crack an over pair. So th this is one of those plays. I'm not expecting to get many folds now, but I'm setting it up where I can bluff on the river. And then the opponent does call. So we do go heads up to the river. The river's a three of spades. Not the best river card in the world for us. We don't get there. The villain goes ahead and checks it over to me. And in game, my thought process for betting the turn was to set up a river bluff. I don't really think I should go for it on this river in particular. I think if my opponent is going to call down with pocket eights or pocket nines, they're probably just going to call, particularly on this river. It's not a scare card at all. So that kind of makes me want to give up. The other thing that makes me want to give up is I actually do think we have showdown value with this hand. Like I said, if my opponent has queen jack of hearts, which we already beat that. So I think the best play here is to just check back. In game, I got too caught up in my, in my logic for barreling the turn which is I'm going to try and win this by bluffing on the river. And I do end up pulling the trigger on the bluff, which in retrospect, I think is a mistake. But fortunately, things work out because the villain does fold. They fold it pretty quickly. So I do think it is likely they had a flush draw. So pretty happy to take this one down, even though I do think bluffing the river probably was a mistake. Next hand, a tight aggressive player makes it two and a half under the gun. Then the action folds to me in the hijack with ace queen. I go ahead and three bet it to eight and a half. Then the action gets back to the original razor and they do call. So it heads up to a flop. It's a banger flop for us. It is queen forward deuce, all hearts. And we do have the nut flush draw as well as top pair. So flopping pretty well here today. So they go ahead and check it over to me. And I definitely want to go ahead and see bet with a hand that's this strong. So I go ahead and make it six. And then we do get a call. So go to the turn, turn is the two of diamonds, the under the gun player checks it over to me again and I don't see any reason to stop betting on this board. I think if my opponent has king queen with the king of hearts, they're definitely going to call no matter what size I bet. 
And I think it'll be pretty unlikely that we're going to get three streets of value from hand like pocket nines. But if they have the pocket nines with nine of hearts, they're going to call on this street potentially. So I just want to try and get max value if my opponent does have a worse flush draw or a strong one pair. So I go ahead and make it 16. I don't think potentially I could size up with a bet, something like 20-ish might get me a bit more value from that range of hands. So I go ahead and bet 16, then my opponent does call. So still heads up to the river. The river is the nine of diamonds. Now here's where the hand gets really, really interesting. The under the gun player decides to lead out for 60. So huge bet about the size of the pot. The action's on me here, and this is a pretty gross spot. Because whilst I did think that my opponent had those hands, like king queen with the king of hearts, I don't think they're going to lead those for value, especially when they bet that big, when I can definitely have ace-queen in my range, pocket kings, pocket aces. But remember what I said on the turn. If my opponent had pocket nines with the nine of hearts, look at this river. Those hands are still in their range, and they could just be leading it out, being concerned that I might check back a hand like ace-queen or pocket aces. I probably wouldn't in-game, but they might be thinking that that's what I'm going to do. I definitely do think they have a full houses in their range here, specifically pocket fours and pocket nines. Both make a lot of sense, honestly. I think a slow play of flush is a little bit less likely. It will make some sense as well. King Jack of Hearts, King Ten of Hearts might have not wanted to check raise and blast me off if I did have black aces. So those some hands, I think they're going to be a little bit less likely, but still somewhat possible. So those are the range of hands my opponent could be doing this with for value. But then I'm like... What hands can my opponent be doing this with as a bluff? And I don't think it's that many hands specifically because we have the ace of hearts in this hand. If my opponent was calling down with ace of hearts, ten of diamonds because they had the nut flush draw, leading out here as a bluff would actually make a lot of sense because they know we don't have the nut flush draw and they block pocket aces, which is going to be one of our likely call down hands. It would make sense with one of those type of hands, but because we have the ace of hearts, we know they're not doing it with one of those hands. So they would have had to have called down with something like King Jack with the King of Hearts now they're bluffing with, which I just don't buy at all. I think in this spot, they probably have a strong flush or a full house. So when we only have top pair, I think it makes a decision for us that we have to go ahead and fold here. Hop in the comments below. Let me know what you think about that play. What would you do there? I, I'm sort of working on the assumption that they do have these strong hands and that they're never bluffing, but... If you disagree, hop in the comments and let me know. Next hand, we get an early position open from a tight aggressive player to two and a half. And the action falls to me in the cutoff with my favorite hand in all of poker. You already know, I go ahead and three bet pocket aces to seven and a half. But things just keep getting better because when the action gets back around to the early position player, they go ahead and four bet it to 90. We are absolutely loving what is developing in this situation, but we do have a pretty interesting decision now, whether we wanna go ahead and five bet or set a trap and just call. The reasons I would like going ahead and five betting are, we are against a tight aggressive opponent. So the chances that they're doing this with a strong range of hands is very, very likely. And going ahead and five betting, we're gonna be able to get more value if my opponent does have kings, queens, maybe ace king as well. However, I prefer trapping in this spot, and it's mostly because I do have position on my opponent. Even when you do have a really strong hand, you still do have the advantage of playing in position for you post-flop, and it's going to be easy for us to navigate, particularly at a low SPR. So I go ahead and throw in the call, although I do think there's merit to five betting as well. So we're heads up to a flop, 987 Rainbow. The action's on the villain, and they go ahead and see bet 19. Now the action's on me, and we have the same interesting decision we have pre-flop. Do we want to just call or do we want to raise? And I think the best play in this spot is definitely to just call. I think raising, whilst it might potentially enable us to stack pocket kings and pocket queens, I actually think a thinking tight aggressive player, they actually might even be able to hero fold those hands, particularly on this flop. Like we're going to have more combinations of jack 10 suited, pocket nines, pocket eights that they're not really going to have when they four bet. They might occasionally have a jack 10, but I think it's more likely they do have one of the stronger over pairs. And I do think it might be possible for them to hero fold on this flop. And we just really don't want to give them the opportunity to do that. Additionally, there's another advantage in calling is if my opponent is bluffing, you know, they have ace king and they just want to try and blast at it. We want to enable them to keep doing that on the turn, particularly when we do have position on them. So even if they do check the turn, we have the option to move all in ourselves and we're probably going to be able to stack pocket kings that way. I do throw in the call. Then we go to the turn, which is six diamonds. So 
it, any tennis is straight now, so it makes sense that the villain will go ahead and check it over to me. But it's going to make sense that they do that with all of their overpairs, the queens and the kings. So we can still move all in for value to try and stack those hands. And then my opponent snap calls. So we're loving that news. And we get to see the river, which is the three of clubs. Not going to improve the strongest hands in their range. And we do get to see what they had. And it was pocket kings. So pretty unfortunate cooler for my opponent there. But I still like my line slow playing the aces here when we do have position in the hand. But if you disagree, think it's better to just get all in preflop. I can definitely hear that opinion. Hop in the comments below and let me know your thoughts. So next hand, the action folds to us in the low jack with pocket queens. I go ahead and open it up to three. Then the action gets to a loose passive small blind. And they call, as does a tight aggressive big blind. So we go three ways to a flop, which is a 7-3 deuce with two hearts. The small blind goes ahead and checks it. And then things get interesting. The big blind actually decides to lead out for five, so a bit over half pot. And I think this is a pretty interesting decision. I could just call, let my opponent keep bluffing if they do have a heart draw, two are overs, or... Potentially on the turn, some of the hands that they're going to be leading, like pocket eights, pocket nines, they might keep leading those on the turn if it's not a scare card. Having said that, it might be a scare card, which would mean there's a lot of merit to raising now, just to get value from that range of hands. Additionally, there is some concern that we are behind pocket sevens, pocket threes, and pocket twos, all of which the big blind's going to have in their range. So it's a pretty interesting decision whether you want to raise or not. We do have to be concerned about the small blind as well, who's definitely going to have hands that they can overcall with at worse than ours, um, which we might fold out by raising. So really, really interesting decision whether you want to raise or just call here. In game, I did decide to just call. I think the biggest determining factor was that we do have the small blind who can overcall with the worst range of hands. Potentially might be missing value if my opponent does have a overpair to this board or a flush draw. So hop in the comments, let me know what you think. I, honestly, I could see going either way. I throw in the call, as does the small blind. So we're still three ways to the turn, which is the ace of diamonds. Not the best turn card in the world for us. The small blind checks it over. Big blind keeps betting at it. They go ahead and make it 18. Now the action's on me, and this is a scare card, to be honest. I think my a lot of my opponent's heart draws on the flop that let out are going to have the ace of hearts. So if they let out with ace of hearts, four of hearts, we now lose to that, basically. Having said that, though, I think it is still somewhat possible that my opponent is betting out with pocket eights or pocket nines to try and get value from heart draws or things that are like a pair and a straight draw. So I don't think there are hands in their range that we do beat. So I decide to throw in the call and then the small blind folds. So heads up to the river with the big blind. The river is the ace of clubs. Pretty good river card for us. It blocks the amount of ace-x combinations my opponent does have in the range. And then they check it over to me, which is pretty good news to us. Now I think it's very likely that they do have like pocket eights, pocket nines. So the action's on me here and I just want to bet to get value from those hands. Still am somewhat concerned that my opponent could have an ace -X of hearts type hand. Having said that though, I don't think we can be too timid here. I think we should bet out for value, but I think we should bet something a bit smaller, maybe like 30 to 40, something in that range, just to give pocket nines a good price to call. I go ahead and bet 59, the size of the pot, which honestly, this is way too big. I definitely could see my opponent potentially hero folding pocket nines here, and we do really have to be concerned that my opponent does have an ace in their range, in which case, like, we don't want to be betting this big. It's just a very inefficient bet for those reasons. I go ahead and bet 59, and then my opponent check raises me all in for 163. Ugh, definitely have to go ahead and fold the queens here, in my opinion. It's very possible that my opponent does have trips here, but the fact that they represent so much strength with the check raise, I actually wouldn't be too surprised if they did have a full house. If they were bluffing with like a missed flush draw, like kudos to them. I just can't pay them off when they do have all those strong hands in their range, so I do end up folding. Next hand, the action folds to me in the small blind with 9-8 of clubs. I go ahead and open it up to 4, and then we get a big blind defense. So it heads up to a flop, a 6 four, rainbow. We do have the backdoor flush draw here though, but not much else. I still want to see bet bluff on this board in particular, just because we're going to have all the stronger ace -X hands in our range. I think if the big blind had ace-king, ace-queen, ace-jack, they'll probably just go ahead and three bet those pre-flop, blind versus blind. So we can very credibly represent strong hands on this board. I decide to mix in the C bet bluff. I go ahead and make it three. And then the opponent does call. So not quite what we were hoping for, but we do get a bit of help on the turn. Three clubs on the turn, so we do turn a flush draw. And now 
I really like keeping on betting here. Not only do we have the equity of a potential flush draw, but we also can keep representing those strong ace-x hands to try and put max pressure on my opponent if they do have a weaker ace. So I go ahead and bet 11. I like sizing up to this too. It is going to put the most pressure on those ace-x hands. I make it 11. And then my opponent throws in the call. So heads up to the river. That's a banger river. We do make a flush on the queen of clubs. Now the action's on me and I have a slam dunk decision to keep betting for value. It just comes down to what size I want to use. And I think the determining factor on what size I should bet is the inflection point where my opponent starts to fold those hands that are like ace nine, ace eight. There's going to be, if I go ahead and bet, you know, the size of the pot, I think there's going to be a decent chance they get away from it. So I'm going to go get ahead in that big. I ultimately decided on 28, which I'm pretty happy with. Maybe I could go a bit bigger or a bit smaller, but you, you really do want to be betting a pretty healthy size bet here to try and get max value if my opponent just decided on the turn that they want to call down with an ace. So I go ahead and bet 29, and then my opponent throws in the call. So we're loving that news, and we're going to end up scooping this pot. I think it's very likely my opponent did have a one pair ace x hand because they probably would have raised something else on an earlier street if they were stronger. So happy to get max value on that one. Last hand of the session, I am under the gun with king jack of spades. I go ahead and open it up to three. Then the action gets to a loose aggressive button. They go ahead and three bet it to 10. The action gets back to me here and I honestly think we have two very distinct options in this spot. We can either four bet as a bluff or just call. I want to take folding off of the table entirely. When we are this deep against an opponent that is this aggressive, I think calling is definitely a very solid option. I could go ahead and four bet just because they are loose aggressive. I think they're going to have a bunch of junky hands in their range which are going to fold to a four bet. Jack 10 suited, ace four suited, stuff like that is going to fold. Having said that, it's still a button three bet versus an early position raise which is going to be a strong range. So can definitely have ace king pocket jacks plus which i'm not going to be able to fold them from so i honestly could see going either way with a four better call in game i decided to call so we go heads up to a flop 954 rainbow i go ahead and check it over to the villain then they just like to check back to be honest i was a little surprised they checked back this opponent had been c betting and three betting very aggressively so when they do check back i think it is indicative of what their range potentially could be i think it's Definitely possible it's a showdown value hand like ace king or ace four suited, ace five suited type thing that they're just trying to play a bit of pot control with. But I do think it's somewhat possible that they're mixing in a trap with some of the stronger over pairs like aces, kings, queens, just because they have been c betting so aggressively that it just seemed a bit suspicious when they did check back. It is somewhat possible they still have strong hands in their range, in my opinion. So we get to see a turn. The turn is absolutely beautiful for us. It is the queen of spades. Not only do we turn a flush draw, but we have a gut shot to a 10. So the action's on me here, and I definitely want to go ahead and bet. I think we're going to be able to get folds from ace-king most notably, but even if my opponent does call with an ace-five or an ace-four, it's going to be really hard for them to call down against two barrels. So I do decide to mix in the bet. Go ahead and make it 18. Considering that I think my opponent does have those stronger overpairs in their range, this is probably a bit too big. I think we can bet smaller and get an ace high to fold, something like 13, 14, probably a better sizing. I go ahead and make it 18 though. Then things get really interesting because the button decides to raise to 48 and a half. The action's back on me here and Remember what I said on the flop, that my opponent could be trapping with a lot of those stronger overpair hands? Well, they might have just hit a set with queens. That's definitely possible. They also could be raising for thin value with pocket aces. If they're concerned, we do have a hand exactly like what we have, which is a flush draw plus a straight draw. So even though conventionally, I think this line would look a bit suspicious, I actually do think it's pretty strong when my opponent didn't see bet the flop. And even if they are semi-bluffing with a nut flush draw hand, like we're dominated against that hand. So honestly... As tight as it might seem, I actually think folding here does make a lot of sense against a range of hands that's that strong. Even if we do hit a flush on the river, our opponent's going to have a bunch of nut flush drawers in their range too, and they're probably going to be able to get away from pocket aces or maybe even a set. So I do think there is a lot of merit to folding. I couldn't pull the trigger in game. I decided to just call. I didn't want to go ahead and three bet here either just because my opponent's range does have all those strong hands and I just don't think I'm going to get many folds with a raise here. So I landed on a call, but honestly, 
And you guys can needle me for being a massive nit, but I actually think the best play here probably is just to fold on the turn. Even with a hand this strong, hop in the comments. I know people are going to disagree with me on that, so curious to hear your thoughts. But we do get to see a river, which is a seven of diamonds, so ugh, unfortunately we don't get there. So I just have to go ahead and check it to villain. Then they do check back, and so I'm expecting to lose to like those four of spades, something like that. But then my opponent shows pocket nines, which I was pretty surprised that they checked that back on the river. Not that it would have made a difference. I don't think check raising as a bluff here would have been an option to us, considering I did put them on that stronger range of hands. But really, I knew their turn raising range was strong, and I should just be folding it as tight as that seems, at least in my opinion. So that's it, they were the most interesting hands I played across the session, and in terms of how I actually played throughout the session and my gameplay grade, I decided to land on a B+. The reason I'm on a B+, is because I honestly liked how I played through a majority of the session. I thought I was making good reads and exploiting my opponents optimally. Not quite 100% though, because I'm not going to the A grade level, and it's just those few mistakes I did make, like in hands where I had the pocket queens, and I bet really big on the river for value when I definitely shouldn't be. I think that was a colossal mistake, and I can't quite go to A grade when I was making mistakes that big, and you know, that hand with the king jack on the turn when I called the raise, which I already thought was pretty strong, like... Eh, not a great play in my opinion. I think I can get a huge edge on my competition if I do end up folding there, but still overall happy with how I played. I think if I played like this every session, I probably have a lot of success as a poker player, but not quite at that A grade level when I do still mix in mistakes. So B plus feels pretty fair. That's going to wrap it up for today. Thank you so much for watching the vlog as always. If you haven't already, please subscribe, give this video a thumbs up and leave me a comment. Needle me on how I played those hands. Where can I improve? What have I done? Good. Hop in the comments below. Let me know all of it. And if you haven't already, go follow me over on Instagram at leadbets. Get these interactive hand histories, which I've been doing forever. For now, I'm out of here. Peace.